Okay, we're going to talk about the evolution of, of the European continent. It is great that there is a scientist that uh, focuses on paleoanthropology and evolutionism, that is me, because it is true that social Darwinism, for instance, and other anthropological theories have been used in the past to defend uh, ideologies of supremacy, uh, domination, or, or sexist uh, philosophies to, to dominate other people. And there have been uh, some, some arguments that were supposedly scientific have been used to defend and justify that kind of ideas and practices. And in reality, those ideas were never really uh, proved scientifically. And in any case, ethically or morally speaking, they are unacceptable. Those narratives are just unacceptable, even if they had been true. But they are not true, as it happens. So they have no uh, scientific basis claiming that one uh, human being is better than other or that one culture is better than, than, than another has no scientific base. It's, it's just absolutely false and ethically unacceptable. Europe is just a, a, a geographic appendix to Asia. Therefore, it is difficult to, to understand how in the past our continent was the, the center of anything at all from a perspective of the evolution. We're, we're marginal, we're just, uh, uh, we're, we're not the heart of, of, the, of the old world. So I don't have much time and I'd like to focus on the many migrations that have taken place, the different uh, migrations that uh, have populated our continent, coming from other uh, places with different cultures and they've been uh, overlapping each other to form a, a, a mixed population. The European population is, is, has, has been mixed from the very beginning. We're not the origin or the beginning of n anything at all. We're just the consequence of, of other things that have happened before us. Our origin, of course, needless to say, is African, comes from Africa. I feel very, very short here in this chair. Now I see you better. So, our closest uh, uh, ancestors were chimpanzees. They are like our brothers. And we've been defined by a well-known uh, scientist, Jerry Diamond, as, as the third uh, uh, chimpanzee. And our origin, as I said, is in Africa. And, and Darwin al already said that. He dared to say that. I'm going to show you some, some images, a couple of monkeys, we could say, apes. This is our most remote origin. And as I was saying, uh, we come from Africa, but doubly so, or, or, or in many different ways, Africa in the human evolution has been the real force behind evolution and has been uh, sending people towards the rest of the world. And, and, uh, it, and, and one of the last migrations is, is uh, the, the last migration is the Homo sapiens. So the dawn of mankind took place in that continent and the African continent is uh, our, our true homeland, we could say. So uh, we can see there our ancestors in the jungle. That was millions and millions of years ago. Uh, our history began seven or eight millions of years ago, and the, the, the oldest fossils are in Chad, when Chad was a tropical jungle before it, it became the, the semi-desert that it is uh, uh, currently. So these are our ancestors, our, our grand, great-grandparents. 
we can see uh, a couple of very well-known people. Uh, some of them, we, we know their biography. We know their lives and how they, they, they died. One of them is the, the child of town, uh, that the, one of the first Australopithecus that was found in 1924, uh, that, that, uh, that fossil. It changed our understanding of the history of our evolution because it was so primitive, so old. And then the other one that we can see that's been reconstructed and, and, and that is represented, that is uh, Lucy. And she's also well known, belongs to the family. It is interesting to, to, to go back to Africa because that uh, forces us in a way or, or, or leads us to, to the following reflection. All human beings have common roots, common origins. And that is what uh, science has uncovered. Evolution continues for, for many, many years in Africa. Uh, the exodus of the of the African continent, uh, the first wave took place two million years ago, approximately, and our history began seven or eight million uh, years ago. So, of those years, five million are only exclusively African. At a certain point in time, technology appears. Uh, we learn how to use uh, stones and that gives us uh, access to new resources uh, because uh, technology uh, increases our phenotypes, our, our abilities, uh, those abilities that uh, we had thanks to biology and now we have, thanks to technology, tools that uh, our genes uh, had not given us. And thanks to that, our abilities increase and, and improve in comparison to uh, people before. The first non-biological tool that we get is uh, the, 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 the blade of a stone. That's how we we started our culture huh? thanks to that that blade that edge of a stone and the appearance of those tools greatly improved our possibilities we had access to to new foods and we were able to escape uh, from a place from which uh, our relatives the chimpanzees have not been able to escape from that is the the the, the jungle We've always, we, un, up until now, we had evolved in a very confined space. Apes, well, we, we, we lived in that rainy forest, in that tropical forest, and uh, no other species was, was able to leave that confined space. We were important there, we were a part of the ecosystem, And uh, as, as, as uh, primates, we weren't able to, to survive there uh, before the appearance of technology. And thanks to technology, uh, many possibilities open up, one of them being uh, leaving behind that green uh, prison. And we were able to, to colonize our environment. We were a lot more flexible and, and, and different. Not just as hominids, but as, 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 as uh, primates as well. So we were, or yes, we were the only apes that really managed to uh, leave the jungle and colonize other environments. And that environmental plasticity has allowed us to populate all uh, areas in the world. We are the only 
apes in the Mediterranean or uh, in, in deserts, in, in woods, in all sorts of places. We've managed to go everywhere. So we are the, the only primates that can survive in so many different environments. And that is thanks to the uh, appearance of those um, blades, stone blades. Our plasticity, as, as we say, did not allow us to uh, live in uh, environments where there were seasons and resources were uh, seasonal. And the problem when you leave the equator is that seasons exist and vegetables uh, concentrate their, their production of, of food in a specific uh, season of the year and the rest of the year uh, food is not available. So that was a, a huge obstacle, seasonality of food. And that was overcome some two million years ago. What we can see here are the first human beings, because they belong, they belong to our genus, the Georgicus, those fossils. And they were found outside Africa. They appeared in Georgia, uh, at the doors of, of Europe. So this is already our continent. Two million years ago, those five fossils uh, were there in Manisi, in Georgia. This is the, the other Iberia. Yeah? The Romans said they had Iberia, ours in Spain, and Georgia, they called it also uh, Iberia. And that's where uh, those oldest fossils were found. But two million years ago had not really uh, entered the European continent yet. And as I say, it is a hostile uh, continent by definition for a primate because of the seasons, because most of the time there is nothing to eat, basically. Nothing a, 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 an ape can eat. So uh, here you can see a picture of what those ecosystems were in Europe. Eh? And the, the picture was taken in Atapuerca in Spain, because that's where we're uh, going now. There are different uh, species. New resources had to be learnt uh, or, or, or learn to manage them. And this takes us to uh, Atapuerca, where we can find some of the oldest fossils in Europe. That jaw that you can see is the oldest uh, fossil that has been found in Europe. So Spain is an area uh, that, that was populated a long, long time ago. And in the Sierra of Atapuerca, we have uh, an amazing heritage because Atapuerca preserves uh, a, a, a lot of information about what happened during that million years. So you have to go to Atapuerca if you want to, to get to know our oldest uh, ancestors. So here you can find other fossils. Uh, those fossils, uh, well, the, 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 the ones you saw come from the, 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 the site of the elephant, and this is from the Gran Orina. And these sites have been declared uh, the heritage of, of, of humankind. And one of the biggest uh, museums has been built there in the city of Burgos. Uh, is the, the Museum of Human Evolution. And it's not just archaeology. It is a museum, uh, and that was the idea when it was created, mm, to, to, to say that uh, human species had not really created a museum just for itself. Because all museums refer to uh, uh, a time, uh, a people, a tribe. There is not a universal, or there was not a universal museum. It is the, the, the first museum that is really dedicated to our species, to, to its past, present, and future. So I can really recommend you visit this museum. 
and we will try to, to get all peoples united there. And this is a universal museum, as I say. Uh, this is interesting, or what, what we can say there is interesting for everybody, for the Japanese, for Colombians, for Spaniards, Greeks. So those Europeans were cannibals one million years ago, so that's why we can, we can see what we can see here on the picture. And now, because we're running out of time, we in Atapuerca there is a, a, a site uh, that was 500,000 years ago, and there we found in, in, in that cave uh, the greatest accumulation of human bones. Uh, this, this site is, is, is still being excavated and we found uh, 30, at least 30 skeletons that uh, died there. So the skeletons are, are very well preserved and we are reconstructing those skeletons. So this is the, the biggest uh, uh, site with con containing skeletons. And this should be a, a world reference for everything that has to do with the past and the present, especially with the future of our species. I think that that site to, uh, is, is where we should all gather and, and get together. Then that uh, cave uh, of, of, of bones is an amazing place to visit. And we formulated a hypothesis that it is a symbolic accumulation of bones. It would be like a, a first sanctuary of, uh, of humanity. So those bones are there for, for a reason. So it would be the first time in the history of mankind that a symbolic, conscient uh, uh, mind uh, carried out uh, 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 something like this. So 500,000 years ago they become conscien conscious and and that that gift obviously is, is is a poison gift because the first thing that they find out is that we are doomed we're going to die that is the first discovery of 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 the conscious mind that we're going to die and i think that that's how we can explain these practices uh, this could be the first sanctuary of mankind. So five minutes to continue with the evolution of mankind. The uh, Neanderthals, uh, they are really uh, the first uh, uh, Europeans. This species uh, evolved in Europe. Uh, Europe, uh, as I said, is a, a geographic appendix to Asia. It is marginal, is not being the center of production of anything in, in evolutionary terms, but, but it did produce uh, a, a local species, the Neanderthals. So uh, they're authentically European, the only ones. That is why we could imagine, well, how would this European Parliament be if the Neanderthals hadn't, be, hadn't been superseded by the Homo sapiens from Africa? It would be a completely different parliament. Eh? If they, if their minds are as symbolic as we as we think they are, they had their, their tools. You can see it here how that would be. They have their tools, but they're dressed uh, in a European fashion. But in the meantime, uh, in Africa, uh, a new species emerged, our species, the Homo sapiens, and they left Africa. And they uh, met with three different uh, hominids in, in Asia. And they, uh, they bred together. So in your genes, in the genes of everybody here, there are at least a 2% of uh, uh, Neanderthal uh, genes. So the substitution was not complete. And some of, the, of those genes are still alive in us. Hmm? There is a blood of uh, a, a drop of blood of, of of Neanderthal blood in our veins, and if we have a look again at those uh, philosophies of supremacy and the superiority of the white race, well, 
uh, in the light of, of, of that discovery, it is absolutely ludicrous. So this is a cause to, to, to fight for. Homo sapiens go home, yeah? Uh, Neanderthals would, would say that if they were here. They would uh, ask us to, to leave Europe. But here we are. And let me finish in two minutes in very few words. What is the genetic uh, structure of our population? Uh, this is a discovery that uh, was made only three years ago. There was an international consortium uh, to which we belong, Spanish researchers, and a study was carried out, a synthesis uh, that is final. It will be nuanced maybe, but we could say that it is final in its uh, findings. I don't think that many uh, changes will be made to it. So that study uh, reveals the genetic structure of us Europeans. Uh, at a certain point in history, uh, the ice melts in Europe and the warm uh, Ida uh, begins and uh, European populations still uh, hunt and gather and then at a certain point in time agriculture appears. We can see at the Puerca here and how it was transformed by farmers. Those fields that you can see uh, have been farmed for 7,000 years, which is what I explain to local farmers. I, I, I tell them, you know, you farm in uh, this, these fields and uh, before you there were other farmers. The first ones arrived 7,000 years ago. This is a very modern site in, in, in Atapuerca. In Atapuerca, we're news not just because we have the oldest fossils, but also because we have uh, human uh, fossils belonging to, to farmers, uh, cattle breeders, uh, people that work with metal, the bronze er uh, era. And when we study their ADN, uh, DNA, sorry, we understand how the European population uh, evolved. And this is, as I say, a, a recent study, and uh, Spanish science has uh, led the way there. And that uh, image that you can see there uh, will help me as a reminder to remember what are the four uh, main components of the genetics of, of the Europeans, uh, those that have uh, European ancestry. Uh, We have first the, the old uh, hunters and gatherers before the farmers and cattle breeders. So we have genes that come from those hunters and gatherers. To that we have to add genes belonging to farmers and, and they also started to, to use ceramic and uh, are, are more sedentary and they started to uh, uh, grow cereal, vegetables, and they became uh, shepherds. They came from the Eastern Mediterranean. We have a lot of information about those uh, about that time, some 7,000 years ago, more or less. And uh, it's also interesting to point out that the first that arrive in 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 to the Castilian plains are very similar to the Turkish farmers because they've not mixed yet with the local uh, populations in the plains of uh, Castilia. And then there is another component, genetic component, coming from uh, other plains, bronze metals and horses and carts pulled by, by oxen, they, they all uh, arrive in Europe uh, some 5,000 years ago when, when the Jamnaya, that's the name of, of that tribe, they come from Russia, the Jamnaya, 
and they are shepherds from the Ukrainian uh, plains to the north of the of the Black Sea, and they uh, set out to to come here. They domesticated the horse. They know how to use uh, copper. They build uh, carts, and they arrive uh, in Europe. And they are like one of the ingredients in our genetic mix. And then we need to say that not all European populations have uh, or that that uh, component from 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 Russia. Of course, needless to say, they all uh, start using horses and, and and metal, but not all populations were genetically influenced by them. For instance, the Basque people uh, do not have uh, that that those genes. The, the people from Bulgaria either, and then the European populations receive influence from uh, Northern Africa. So those are the main four genetic components. The hunters, gatherers, the Eastern Mediterranean component, they invent uh, farming and they spread it uh, in Europe. Then the people that come from Ukraine with their flocks of animals and finally the, the, the people that come from Northern Africa. So that is the genetic pool of, of uh, Europeans, basically. So the message, again, the message of science, I mean, uh, and also the message of ethics is that we all belong to one single species. We inhabit a planet. We are very related to one another in evolutionary terms. We've mixed a lot. We have our differences, but we have a long, long, long common history. A lot longer than the recent history that we we might have uh, known where, where there were separations. Thank you very much.